Where is the airport? The communications on this record were recorded in over 15 hours of flight time. These conversations were then edited and rearranged so as to present an educational aid providing you with the maximum amount of assistance in the acquisition of correct radio skills and habits. Let's start with the basic rudiments of tower communications and see how initial calls to a tower should be made. Oshkosh Tower, 8180 Lima, ready for takeoff on 27, staying in the pattern. Perfect, absolutely perfect. I forgot to say Cessna. That's not making a difference. November 8180 Lima, Oshkosh Tower, runway. Oshkosh Tower, 8180 Lima. So I just have to keep it going straight down the runway. Straight down that dotted line. line. Drive that airplane with your feet all the way down that center line. Okay, that's the first phase. The airplane, left alone, does a pretty decent job. We just have to give it time to move more back. Let's talk about take off in a little more depth. Oshkosh Tower, 8180 Lima. Ready for takeoff on 27, staying in the pattern. So I just have to keep it going straight down the runway. Straight down the runway.
On the ground, a pilot taxis and makes his engine run up at relatively low power settings. Thus, the cockpit remains relatively quiet. You'll have no difficulty in hearing any transmissions made to you by the tower. Once you're airborne and are using a great deal of engine power, the noise level in the airplane will increase to the point that you won't hear any calls unless you turn up your volume control. Experienced pilots make it a habit to increase their volume just prior to takeoff, thereby eliminating the chance of missing an important call. Here's a transmission that pilots in slow aircraft will sometimes hear immediately after takeoff. Look up there! Hey, you got that, man! No. Hey. Get it. 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 Get it.
Keep going if you want, I'm out of gas. Okay. <laughs> 